Uh, we're looking at 2 Corinthians today. That's the epistle lesson. <laughs> That's what I should have labeled on the sheet, the epistle lesson. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I love 2 Corinthians uh, so much. Different verses from that book. I came to the assurance of salvation through 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin in our behalf, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And I realized Jesus paid it all, completely, 100%, and declares me to be righteous in his sight by faith. Well, uh, the title of the message today is Transhumanism. Transhumanism. Uh, whoever thought that, that little word prefix that we've used without thinking for time out of mind, trans, would become an important and even controversial word. I mean, do you think in, uh, do you think in 1965 when someone was having their transmission fixed, they thought that the first part of that word would one day be controversial or transfer? Transcontinental Railroad, Transatlantic Treaty. Now with transgender and transhumanism, it has become a word tied in with the very controversial ethical issues. Uh, surgeons are making men into women, women into men, at least outwardly. Scientists are trying to turn humans into a new breed of human being that's part digital and part human, a trans humanism, whatever that means and whatever it's going to mean as technology develops. Uh, God is also in the trans business. Did you know that? He's in the business of transforming us from glory to glory. Uh, really from making us human into superhuman. Filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Like the songwriter puts it, uh, Changed from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place. So today on Transfiguration Sunday, when Jesus, in the midst of that so difficult, painful Holy Week, I mean, here it was, right toward the end there uh, of his life, before he went to the cross, he was transfigured before them, and, and they caught a glimpse of his glory, a glimpse of his glory. We all need that once in a while. We need a glimpse of God's glory, whether it's through a great piece of music or the scriptures or something, a beautiful sunset. We need a glimpse of the glory of God every once in a while to keep our perspective straight and realize that the Lord is in control. Well, God's making us transhuman, not in the sense of part computer, but in the sense of the Holy Spirit changing our lives. Let's look at it together. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. And the first thing I want to point out from this text here is outward transformation. We're going to talk about outward transformation and inward transformation. Outward transformation by the light of God's glory. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the Old Covenant is read. It has not been removed, because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts, but whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. Uh, a song which kind of um, highlights the sadness and dullness on so many faces uh, used to be a popular song on Christian radio. Uh, it puts it so well. Every day they pass me by, 
I can see it in their eyes. Empty people filled with care headed who knows where. On they go through private pain, living fear to fear. Laughter hides their silent cries. Only Jesus hears. Isn't that true? So many people we encounter day by day uh, are, have an emptiness in their eyes and they live fear to fear. They live fear to fear. And so many are experiencing this. They don't have that light, that radiance, that hope, that joy, and that peace. And, and, and they have a veil. They have a veil that just keeps them from seeing the big picture from seeing that the Lord is in control. And, and I think we as believers, we can have partial veils too. Even though we've had a glimpse of glory, a glimpse of Christ, a glimpse of salvation, we can have this partial veil. We probably all have many partial veils that need to be pulled back and, and we can see then the bigger picture of hope and faith and the transcendence of God and the ultimate end which is going to be good of all things and we need to have that veil removed. And you say, well, how do we get that veil removed? And this text here tells us how the veil is removed. Verse 16. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Let's think about that. There is a song. It's in our hymnal. Um, and it was in the old Concordia hymnal, which was the root of our hymnal when we made the new one. I was the chairman of the project. And all the old Norwegians who knew how to read Norwegian said, you've got to translate a hymn differently. Uh, in the old hymnal, it's called One Resolve, One Resolved, a very poetic, pretty translation. But they said, it's not what the Norwegian says. It's not what the Norwegian says. So we had a couple in my first parish, now this is getting to be well over 30 years ago, 35 years ago, who spoke fluent Norwegian, Arnold and Olga Hagen. And they were ones who were saying, yeah, it's not what it says. Well, I said, will you retranslate it? So Arnold and Olga retranslated it, not as poetically, but more accurately into English. And in Norwegian, it's called Kun et Skrit. And um, in, in uh, in English now, that means just one step. Just one step. And let me just read some words of it, and you can read it on your own in the hymnal. You can go to an old Concordia hymnal and look at the more poetic translation. Just one step, just one step, you who doubtfully stand, where you know you will not be led home, it will show you the way, it will open up years filled with peace as it leads you along. And that song is describing what verse 16 says here. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. There is a step that releases us into a new uh, walk with God, a new vision, a new level of glory, a new level of insight. But you have to take that step. The word comes to you, the call comes to you, the spirit's speaking to you, and he's saying, if you will just take that step, you'll have a whole new vista, a whole new revelation. But we don't take that step, why? Fear. Because it's always a step in the dark. That's what faith is. You take that step by faith. You know, whatever it is. But, and, and, and God does not take the veil away until you take the step. He's come to you first. He's given you the invitation. I mean, what's the invitation? Matthew 11. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Every one of us here is struggling with some lack of light, some bitter pain, some difficult issue in your life, and as long as you don't take that step and you hang on, remain in control, I'll figure this out. You'll never get the light. 
the vision, the, the, the revelation, because God, <laughs> God doesn't waste, cast pearls before swine. He does not waste uh, the higher level until you're ready for it. You've got to take the step of faith. And when you take the step of faith, uh, then all of a sudden the, the light comes again. The light comes again. Uh, as believers, we can return to darkness through anger, unforgiveness, pride, lust, envy, greed. Just because we're walking filled with the Holy Spirit today does not mean three, four, five years from now we, we will be. We can let the darkness creep back in. Or, you know, we can go the other direction and we can push the darkness out and invite the light in. We're studying in confirmation this little thing right now and memorizing it, part of what the boys are memorizing. God says it this, uh, Luther, not God, Martin Luther says it this way, that all sins and evil lusts should be drowned by daily sorrow and repentance and be put to death and that the new man should daily come forth and rise to live before God in righteousness. What are you harboring today that needs to be put to death so that the new man, which is Christ in you, can come alive in that area of your heart that's dark? It's also called walking in the light. Walking in the light. And the key to being positive and dynamic uh, in this world today is to walk in the light, not in darkness. Let me read to you from 1 John chapter 1, which talks about this. This is very important. This is the message we've heard from him and declare to you. God is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sins. Take that step out of the darkness into the light. Um, do you want to be a beacon of light in this dark world? Just take that step. A step away from sin and a step back into God's light. Just, just turn around. What area of your life is dark right now? Fear, anger, bitterness, greed jealousy, you know, we could just name it all, and just, just turn around and say, God, by faith, I'm going to step in the opposite direction and see what happens, what you open up. And when you do, that is when the veil is taken away, and that's when the light shines again. And you'll have joy and hope and a positive attitude, even in a challenging world. Willful sin makes our eyes lose their light, just like stepping out of the darkness of sin and into the glorious light of God can change that, and it'll transform your face. Just look up that hymn in the hymnal one day, just one step, and you'll see what that step will do that the Norwegian revivalists found in their personal life when they wrote that. Outward transformation by being in the light, by stepping into the light of God's glory. And then secondly, inward transformation by the light of Christ in our hearts. Going on to 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 6. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways we do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Now, did you notice that last verse? This is absolutely key. Verse 6 that talks about how this transformation begins in our hearts, in our mind, will, and emotions, and then it comes out through our life 
in every possible way. We might say the light, the light starts to leak out as it's blazing inside. Verse 6, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Now I want to paraphrase that verse because I think it's very important to put it in words we can understand. Here it is. When the world was created, God said what? First thing, let there be light. And the light shined out of the darkness. This same God who can speak light out of darkness at the creation of the world wants to bring that light into your hearts and let it shine out through you from the inside out. So it's not a pasted on happy face. It's an inner light that just leaks out, you know, because it's shining so bright. You know, like Christ, when he's transfigured, it's like brighter than the sun, brighter than anyone could make white clothing. I, I think, when I think of the transfiguration, I think of welding. You know how you weld and you're not supposed to look at it. The light is so bright. You know, or some of these new flashlights are awfully bright too. There's nothing compared to the radiance of the light of God. So my question is this. Would you come to the altar today after the service or would you go home, maybe to your bedroom and kneel by your bed and just simply, see, it, God's ways aren't complicated. You don't have to climb to the mount, top of Mount Everest to get this. Just simply go home and pray a simple prayer like this one. I'll just give you an example, okay? God, shine your light into the darkest corners of my heart. Now, you got to mean it. If you want to keep nursing a grudge, it won't work. you got to mean it. God, shine your light into the darkest corners of my heart. Fill me with your radiance divine. Drive out the darkness of sin that poisons my body and soul. Only you can deal with my inner darkness. Drive out the demons and fill my heart with your Holy Spirit. Um, I renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways, and I believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's just that twofold thing. Renouncing darkness and embracing the light of Christ. Too many people are filled with the darkness of sin and demonic power. Only the light of Christ can save our land. Only the light of Christ can save our world. See, I think people in England are starting to realize that. England in a year or two or three or four is going to be majority Islam. And they realize it's irreversible. So they're gathering in cathedrals all over England and singing these great old hymns. They're, they're singing the hymns of hope because they've lost hope. Their country's lost. Europe's almost lost. And they know that only Jesus Christ himself can turn it around. It's lost otherwise. And so they're starting to call on the Lord. And this is encouraging. But it's got to be the real deal. Religion cannot take place in the light of the world. World Council of Churches, they thought if we can just organize all churches together and get them all together, we'll have power to change the world for good. Organizationally. That, that's what they, they did. And then the United Nations was formed. This is going to end all wars. Ha, ha, ha. They thought the United Nations was the fulfillment of the millennium. Revelation chapter 20. There's a Bible verse right outside the United Nations. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And when they stopped, they, when they organized to stop wars, there have been more wars than there have ever been. Religious organization can't do it. Political organization can't do it. I don't care how you vote this coming November. It's not the answer. Either way. 
Only the power of God can change our nation and our world, and it starts one person at a time. Surrendering to Christ, driving the darkness out of our own hearts, receiving the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the light of God, back in our hearts. Uh, this is the trans generation. But rather than cursing the trans movement, let's just get on board with the transformation of our homes, our hearts, our church, and our nation through the light of God's glory. That'll give people who are going all these directions some hope, some hope when they see it changing who we are. You know, another song that was popular 20 years ago uh, kind of pulls it all together. And as I close now, and as I repeat the words of the last verse and the chorus of this song, think about Jesus shining radiantly on the mountain of transfiguration with Moses and Elijah talking about what is about to take place. And, and think about him so bright that they could hardly look at him as we uh, read these words. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness. Isn't that neat? As we look to the Lord, his brightness shines right on our face. We're like the moon. He's like the sun. Ever changing from glory to glory, mirrored, mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me. And you know the chorus, shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word and let there be light. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human comprehension guard our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. For more information or to contact us, please visit us on the web at mnvalleychurch.org or find us on Facebook at Minnesota Valley Church.